right, good morning. As people are joining us in person and tuning in online this morning, let's stand up and get a time of worship today. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King of all. The whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King of all kings. This is amazing grace. today and um, we just want you to take a minute to say hello to each other before we get started here and for those of you joining us online we're so happy you can worship with us as well and remember that you can connect with us via the comment section below or via our website cbctoday.com slash connect um, let us know who you are where you're from if there's any way we can be praying for you we'd love to be a blessing to you this week and remember, everyone here, you can connect with us via our Connect cards. They're located under the seats in front of you. Grab a pen, fill that out. Let us know how we could also be praying for you. And if there's any ministry you'd love to join here or you want to learn more about this church. So uh, this week, the kids 
are returning to school, and I had to thank Pastor last week for his message, um, because I have two kids who went back to college this week, and uh, reminded us from the words of Ephesians 2.10 that we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us so long ago. Great words of encouragement for all our students, right? And I uh, hope you just remember this as you go back to school, kick off to the new year. Remember that purpose that God has for you. These next songs that we're going to be singing are testimonies of God's faithfulness and purposes for us. So let's just raise our voices together and sing these out to him. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. And man's empty praise and treasures I've laid are never enough. You came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied for hearing your love. Oh, there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing that's better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. And I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain is the God in the valley. Not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing that's better than you. Oh, there's nothing. There's nothing is better than you. There's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing that's better than you, Lord. There's nothing. There's nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who cares. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who cares. You're the only one who cares. Oh, there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing that's better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. There's nothing is better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you.
Let's go to God in prayer this morning. As we are just singing to you, God, there is nothing in this world that can, can fill a void, the voids that each one of us have in our hearts and our lives. Before we come to know you and to know your son as our savior, as our redeemer, as a way of salvation and a way that we can spend eternity with you, God, a way that one day we know through all the hardships and difficulties that we will endure in this life, that one day you are faithful and just. As you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, God, you are faithful to us, and we will have a place in eternity with you. And remind us of that this morning as we're talking about this simple thing of hope that we have a hope that separates us from this world. It is a hope that allows some of us to, to continue on. It's a hope that a lot of us are clinging to maybe in this moment and things happening in our lives. And we thank you, God, for that blessed hope that we have through you and through your son, Jesus. We want to worship you this morning, God. We want to do our parts in lifting our voices and our, and our thoughts and everything that we have to you so that you speak through us this morning. God, we know as Paul writes in the New Testament daily, he has to die to himself. He has to surrender himself, surrender his will, surrender his struggle, surrender the, the things in his heart and mind that were keeping him from truly doing your work. And God, like, like Paul, we each need to be able to do that, to surrender ourselves. Oh God, that's what we do this morning. We surrender our thoughts to you. We surrender our worry to you. We surrender everything that causes us to not be fully focused on your word this morning. So bless this time as we sing this one last song of worship to you. Remembering, God, that you are who you say that you are. That means, God, you will do what you say you will do. Bless us during this time, Jesus, as we continue to worship you.
see you this morning. You know, pain is a lonesome place. I don't have to tell you, do I? It'll drop a rock in your stomach right through your pounding heart. And when your knees are so weak, you hit the ground and you finally realize you don't got this. Well, now you might just make it. You see, the tallest tree may not weather the storm, but its roots do. So dig in, stand up, and let the wind blow. Because there's hope. Good morning. We're going to focus on that word hope this morning. And... Uh, you know, it means a lot of different things to different people. I want you to think about, uh, for a minute, when you think of the word hope, and we use it all the time, by the way. It's not like a unique word. Like, what is that word? I've never heard it before. I've never used it. We use it pretty much every day. And we use it very loosely at times, which, which is fine. Um, but I want us to think about what does that word hope mean for you? So t- think a minute, take a minute, excuse me, think about that word. When you think of hope, do you use it kind of loosely? And what I mean by that, because, you know, again, we, we say all the time, uh, we th- say things like it's a fallback, like I hope this works. Uh, we've said that a lot in my house in the last uh, few weeks, <laughs> even this week. We're dealing with some various car problems and stuff, and every time we take it to a, a mechanic or dealer, we take it back and we say, I hope it works this time, right? We do it on every day in our lives. We, we try something new or we hope that something happens, and we use that word hope. I hope this works. I hope I don't have to go through that again. I hope this has a, a brighter future. I hope that this has a better end. We use it all the time. So what do you think about when you think about hope? For others, hope is a very serious thing. Something it's like something they cling on to, something they wish would happen. It's a dream that we, we hope that we have. And it's okay to use it in that context as well. I think it's very important to talk about the significance of what today is. It's today is 9-11. September 11th, 2001. Many of us remember that day very vividly. Some of us might not even been here 21 years ago, but even if you weren't even born, then you've heard the stories and you know the examples. And, and 21 years ago, there were a lot of people, a lot of families that were using that word hope. I hope my loved one reaches out to me. I hope my loved one wasn't in the building that day. I hope my loved one that was a first responder made it out of there. And for many days and, 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 and weeks and months afterward, there was a hope, a clinging of hope. And I think it's very important that we talk about that because hope in that day was very much used in the context of a wish. It was a clinging on to. It was praying and being prayer, prayerful that, that your loved one would return And for some, that hope actually came true, and they got that phone call or that person showed back home that that evening or the next day, and for others, they hung on to that hope, and it never panned out for them. And so today, we want to honor and remember the sacrifice of so many. And we also know that 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 event spurred other events that that changed our world, wars that occurred after that, and and many, many people uh, were hoping after that day. So we remember also and honor the families of all those that are impacted, and military families very much included in that. So we're going to talk about, very simply today, hope in Jesus. It's like Bible 101. It's kind of what you expect, right? But I thought it was very important to kind of stand alone today and talk about what actually hope is. Again, we we use it in so many different ways. I've used it this week in very loose, non-serious ways. Like, I hope my vets don't blow it. They've already blew their their lead uh, in the National League East, and now they have half, half a game, right? You know, some of you as Yankee fans are hoping that Judge hits those 65, at least 65 homers this year. I think he'll do it, right? And so it's okay to use hope in that context as well. It's part of our vocabulary. It's a part of how we think. It's okay to use hope. Like, I hope uh, that um, I hope that it's not raining tomorrow, right? I hope that my car doesn't die again this week. It's okay to use hope in that context as well. 
But when we're talking about hope in Jesus and as followers of Christ, it's a much more serious tone. And, and hope in Christ and hope in that we have through God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, is a hope that you can't explain and, and, and explain to anybody who doesn't have that hope. So we're going to go back to the basic of what hope actually means to believers. Some would call this, what I'm about to say, a very exclusive conversation. It's exclusatory. Is that even a word? Uh, it's, it's very inc- exclusive, or just inclusive, I should say, of just believers. All right? When I talk about the hope we have in Jesus, that is the hope the world doesn't have because they don't have Jesus. So I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to point out the facts. If someone has yet to put their faith and trust in Jesus, they can use that word hope all they want. They can think and feel that it means a certain thing, but until you actually have a faith in Christ, that is when you start actually understanding what true hope and, and actual hope really is. So the good news is, as I am talking exclusively to believers this morning, but the really good news is if you're someone that hasn't accepted Christ into your heart, that is open for you, and you can join in that blessed hope that we have, and we'll talk about that. So the good news is for all of those to remember that He is the way, He is the truth, He is the life. We're going to have hope in Jesus this morning. Let's open this, this time uh, of worship, and that's really where the message is as, as well as the time of worship. Let's open that in some prayer this morning. God, we pray that you would fill this place with your spirit. God, we pray that you would remind us on this very, uh, this very memorial day, as we remember 9-11, remember the tragedy that happened, the victims, and, and the families, the countless families that were impacted. We think of all those those husbands and wives that didn't come home. We think about those children that were missing a, a parent. We're remembering, God, how we used that word 21 years ago, and we continue to use it today. God, let us be a time as believers that we can remember and have some confidence in the hope that we have through you. And God, if there's anyone here this morning that has never had time and place where they've accepted your free, wonderful, blessed gift of salvation, that today, God, that they will cling on and finally understand the hope that I'm speaking of, the hope that you offer to all mankind. Bless us this morning, Jesus. Andy Stanley, uh, Pastor Andy Stanley, says this about hope. I love this saying. It's up here behind me. Hope is like a ladder. It's a picture of a ladder. Hope is like a ladder. We lean against a wall, all right? We trust it to support our dreams, our security, our future. This is something we never think about until it begins to dissipate. Like air, when it begins to evaporate, we gasp for hope like we gasp for air. I love that visual. We're going to talk about that visual of a ladder this morning. Now, I am not terribly scared of heights, but it's something about being on the top of a ladder, and it starts to, to move a little bit. It, it starts to bring a little fear into me. Anytime that we had to change any of this stuff up here, I remember, uh, I don't know if he ever told you what he did, but well, the first time that we ever had to change that bulb up there, Frank um, said, Pastor, we'll get it done. And so we didn't have a ladder tall enough. So this is what we did. Now I'm telling you, all right, just bear with me. <laughs> he brought a couple of saw horses from home, all right? And he set them, two right here. He put a, a, a platform, like, a, like a, a, just a just a piece of wood across it. And then we put a ladder on top of that, but didn't reach, it didn't reach far enough. So we took a couple of these chairs, put them on top of that platform, so it stands about this tall, and now we're having chairs. And then we put the, uh, another piece of wood, and we put the ladder on top of that. OSHA would have shut us down if they had shown up, okay? And Frank says, do you trust me? And I do. I trust him completely. He says, because I can't go up. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to the ladder, and I, I trust me, I will hold it steady for you. And I completely trusted him, and I went up there. And it got to the top, I got to be honest, it started doing a little bit of shaking. And he said, it's, it's fine, you're not going to go anywhere, I got it. But I got to tell you, at the top of a ladder, you really start to say things like, I hope this doesn't fall. I hope that he really can hold it. And then I started saying things like, I hope he can catch me if I do fall. <laughs> but I didn't fall. See, hope is like a ladder, though. We put it against the wall, we're fixing some lights, we're doing whatever. We don't really think about what we're doing until it starts to shake a little bit. And then you start doing a lot of, okay, is this, is this going down? Hope is very much like that. We don't think about things in our life until it starts to waver. And then things happen in our lives. Life starts to move, and we've all been there. I know you've all been there. When life is moving, things are doing well, but that ladder starts to shift a little bit. Things get scary very, very quickly, very fast. Uh, A sickness of a loved one develops, or you get sick yourself. A terrible car accident occurs, and everything else stops. And all you can think about is that. 
loss of a job, a relationship that you're in starts to crumble. You see, things in our lives, we have the ladder propped up against the wall, and things be, appear to be just fine and feel okay, and then that ladder starts to shake a little bit, and that's when you start to cling on to hope. That's when you start saying things like, God, I hope that I make it through this. See, when the ladder in which you're standing starts to shake, things get scary very fast. We start, we, we start hoping that we will make it out of this unscathed. We're going to be looking at a couple different sections this morning. I'm going to start in the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 7, a very familiar story to most of us. My dad preached about uh, the lepers and that we're talking about in the story many, many times. And there's so many different examples and, and things that you can take from the story of these lepers and remind you kind of a little bit what's going on. Um, these are a story of four men who had leprosy. All right? If you're immediately familiar with what leprosy is, we hear about it in the Bible, but it's a real disease. It's still a disease that actually happens in the world today. It's basically a terrible flesh-eating disease. And back then, when you contracted leprosy, there really was no hope. You were actually excluded, right, from wherever you lived. You were sent out to, to, to be with other lepers, and they developed colonies for lepers and just camps for lepers, but they were not allowed uh, back in the city, back in their towns, back in their villages, around any other people because they're so scared of it of being contagious, right? So these four men had leprosy. And they were kicked out of Samaria. That's the city that they were living in. Their ladders, if you want to use this analogy, their ladders had been shaken and had been knocked out from underneath them. They were knocked to the ground. They had no hope whatsoever. Their city was Samaria. It had been surrounded uh, by the Armenians who were their enemy. And the enemy knew that the way to, they, they couldn't necessarily break down the walls. It would take a long time to defeat the walls. So they knew a way to, to kind of discourage the, the, the city and the people in the city was to completely surround it and cut off any chance of any supplies, resupplies happening to that city, which include food, by the way. So after some time, after blockading the city, the city started running out of food and things got really scary very quickly and the city started to lose all hope. So these guys, these four men, these four lepers were part of that city. They were on the outskirts of it, okay? They weren't within the walls of it. And they had a conversation, 2 Kings chapter 7, verses 3 and 4. It says, Now there are four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, Why stay here until we die? Because remember, not only were they separated from the city, but they also didn't have any food either. Okay, and the whole city was in this famine right now. So they said, Why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine is there, and we'll, we will also die. It's like, even if we make it back in the city, they don't have any food anyways. Right? There's no hope there. And if we stay here, we're just going to die. We're going to sit by the city gate and we're going to pass away anyways. So let's go over to the camp of the Ar Ar Armenians and surrender ourselves. And surrender. If they spare us, right, they just kill us on sight. If they spare us, we will live. And if they kill us, then we die. And I'm not here in the conversation, but I'm, I'm picking up from that conversation that happened with each other that wasn't necessarily a bad thing to say that they were going to be killed if they show up there. They kind of said, if they kill us, what's the difference? We're dying anyways. Might as well die by a sword than die by starvation. Talk about no hope. They're at a point in their life where death would have been acceptable to them, almost wanted, almost desired at that point. Now, I'm going to go out and venture to say no one listening today has had leprosy. I'm going to, I'm going to make that guess. We pretty much have squashed that uh, in most of civilization, right? So I'm going to make a guess that no one here has had leprosy, but I'm also guarantee that someone today has felt defeated. They felt alone. They felt tired and hopeless. And some might even say today and have had these thoughts, is it worth it? What's the point of continuing? Your ladder has been knocked off. You are clinging on to some hope and you have some last strands, some last ropes that you're holding on to, but you're getting to the point like these lepers are saying, what's even the point? What's even the point? It's a very important thing for us to remember. What or whom you are hoping in determines your ability to maintain that hope. What or whom you're putting, you're hoping in determines your ability to maintain hope. So if you're feeling hopeless today, then I challenge you to consider what and to whom you're putting your hope in. That's why this is a message for followers of Christ who, by the way, does not, does not mean that we're not going to have situations and times in our lives where we feel 
hopeless. We're human. We go through the same emotions. I wish, and I've said this many times, I wish when you become a father of Christ that all the hardships and the feelings of, of hopelessness and the dark times of despair that all, all, all mankind goes through, I wish that we were excluded from that, but that's not the promise from, from God's Word. God never promised, if you just put your complete faith and trust in my son, that you will never have to worry, you'll never go through difficult times, you'll never, never endure heartaches like the world does. We are never excluded from that, but he does give us something. He gives us this wonderful hope. So if you're feeling hopeless today as a follower of Christ, then I challenge you to consider again what, what and whom you're putting your hope in. Our, our hope is found in God's love for us. A love so deep that he gave us Jesus, who is our strength, who is our confidant, who is our hope. I want to share with you this morning very quickly two truths about hope in Jesus. And, and they're not new things. I'm not going to say something about I've never heard someone speak about that before. I'm not going to share it. I wish, I, I wish it was something that I thought of. But the hope that I'm speaking about in Jesus is that hope that we hear and we read about in God's Word. It's a hope that as a believer, if you've been a believer for any period of time, you've heard this before. So I'm not sharing anything new with you. I'm hoping, see how I use it, what I'm hoping for is that for some of us, we remember the, confident, the confidence and the confident hope that we have through Christ. It's a, it's a reminder for us as we go through these difficult times when we feel like that ladder is about to fall, remembering that we have a hope in something much greater. We have a hope in a God who is, is faithful to us. We have a God that says he's going to supply all of our need. We have a God that is close to the brokenhearted. We have a God that cares about us. A God that cares about us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for us so we could have that hope. So number one this morning, hope in Jesus is available to all. The hope that I am speaking about, now if you're a follower of Christ, that's obviously available to you. If you're not a follower of Christ this morning, and I'll be very specific what I'm saying here, you all might, if you're not a follower of Christ, you might believe in God, you might believe in the Son Jesus, and that's fantastic. That's a great place to start this morning. You're already in a, in a good um, uh, mind frame. If you're watching this online, you say, I believe there is a God. I, I believe in, in Jesus. That's fantastic. But, the, but what I'm talking about is a time and place where you've recognized that you need salvation in your heart, in your life. A time and place where you have surrendered yourself to, to, to Christ and say, I, I am a sinner in need of salvation. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to redeem me. I want you to, to sanctify me and, and and, and help me in a path of righteousness. I want you to be the king of my heart, the king of my life. If you haven't done that, the good news is for you that the hope in Jesus is available to all. I love this, this, this line from this old uh, um, hymn. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And so again, when I say the true hope is exclusive to followers of Christ, the good news is that he came for everyone. Hope is therefore available to everyone. In the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 1, 21 says this, Who through him, this is Jesus, this is the capital H, who through him, Jesus, are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. The hope found in Jesus is unlike any other hope that the world has to offer. You know, it's a, very, uh, it's a very common thing nowadays when something happens with the advent of social media and the way that news gets around so quickly. And you all know what I'm talking about. If something, if you see a post, you see an article somewhere, someone shares on some sort of social, social media that they are going through something, what is the, the common response? And it's not bad. I'm not trying to criticize it. What's a common response that people will, will do? You know, my, my thoughts, my prayers are with you, which is biblical, Okay. It's actually a good thing to, to think about those that are going through struggles, to uplift them up in prayer, prayer for encouragement, prayer for deliverance, whatever, whatever the situation you're going through. It's actually it's not a bad thing whatsoever. But you'll notice that it's not just necessarily believers who say things like, here are my thoughts and my prayers. Why? The world does it as well. I've noticed a, a trend and switch where they no longer say prayers any longer, right? They say things like, you're in our thoughts. 
your, you have my condolences. And there's, a, I think, an intentional move away from talking about prayer and talking about anything that's spiritual. But they were there, and they were saying it all the time. How true is it that we have our hope in, in so many things? So the world will say things like, I hope it gets better for you. I hope this is the end for you. I hope that you don't have to go through something like this again. And then internally we say things like, I hope I never go through that. I hope I never have to deal with a situation like that. We use this word all the time. And, and for many people, hope takes on the form of, of different things. They, for example, put their hope in other people. Here's the thing about people. Sometimes people are great. The, the best thing about people is that people are people. God created them, and they're uniquely and wonderfully made. Okay, so the thing I love about people is that they're so unique, and they're so and wonderful, and you have some really good friends and people in your life, and you know what I'm talking about. You have a really good family in your life. Those are good people. So the best thing about people is that they're uniquely and wonderfully made, and they can be very helpful. You know the worst thing about people are? They're people. <laughs> so they let you down. Even the ones that love you the most, there's still an opportunity for them to, to let you down. There's still an opportunity for you in, in, to be discouraged by something that someone says. Even if they say out of love, and even if they say out of kindness, even if they're trying to, to be supportive to you, they can still sometimes say things and do things that feel everything and anything but supportive. But the world finds a lot of hope in people. The world also finds a lot of hope in different things like sometimes simple things like money. I, I, I hope I have enough right money. If I had enough money, then I realize that uh, then I would be able to get through all my trolls in the world. I, there is a great philosopher that I heard speak this week. You're going to laugh at me in a second. It was an old interview from Mike Tyson. He's not a philosopher by any means. Okay. And it was an old interview. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't looking for it. You ever see anything pop up? And you know, why am I watching this? I don't know where it came from. But I started watching it because it's Mike Tyson. And, and the label was the, the best three years of Mike Tyson's life. And in the interview, he says, the years that he sent in prison, all right, I won't go into all of that, but the years he sent in prison were the best years of his life, which is weird, okay? Which is a very weird thing to say. So that intrigued me. It was the caption of Mike Tyson talks about why he loves prison, something like that. So that's why I watched it. This is the best three years of my life were spent in prison. And the guys interviewed him went like that. Like they, they made their eyes look weird. And they said, well, what are you talking about? He says, because I had everything. He's like, I had millions and millions and millions of dollars. I had tons of people around me. I had everything that people think that they need. And what I realized when I had none of that, what I realized is my hope is actually uh, can't be found in any of that. I realized that I put all of my, my ambitions, all of my hope, and all of my dreams into how much money I can make and how many people I can influence. And I learned really quickly it was a deeper thing than that. Now, Mike Tyson doesn't, is not a believer um, by any sense and stretch of the word, but he was actually getting at a truth. And someone to say even a biblical truth. And he realized that this life, his life, was more than the money that he made. His life was more than the people he had in his life. There's a deeper meaning for it. But the world will, will, will think it's, let's talk about money. They'll talk about, about people. They'll say things like, our, they'll put our hope in different circumstances. I hope this thing changes in my life. I hope this thing changes in your life. And they're talking about circumstances. And we'll put our hope, they'll put their hope in so many different things. But the problem with each one of those things I just talked about is those things will fail. It's not a question of if they will fail. They will fail. Again, you might have the best people in your life. You might have supportive uh, family behind you and friends behind you, but it's never going to be perfect. There's going to be times where you feel let down. There's going to be times where, even if they're not intentionally, they'll say or do something that's going to disappoint you. But the hope and the assurance that we have through Christ and to remind ourselves of how wonderful that is, that is a hope that will never, ever fail us. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. He says, make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I forsake you. Now, this is the book of Hebrews in the Old Testament. That last line is quoted from the Old Testament. This is God saying, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. See, that's the difference of the hope that we have in Jesus and the hope that is available to all. 
is a hope that will never let you down. If you're going through something in your life, believe it, if you're going through something in your life, and you just feel, we use expressions like the end of my rope on my last string, my last straw, my last nerve, last whatever. If one more thing happens, I don't know if I can make it through. If you're clinging on to that this morning, this is a reminder for you of what hope actually is. Hope is, like Paul writes, is dying to himself every single day. Hope is putting your confidence in Jesus and then God as Father will never leave you, will never forsake you, will never let you down. Uh, on the drive in this morning with my boys, they had a good conversation. We're listening to music, and uh, Corbin's singing along. And uh, he says to me, he's like, Dad, what is your favorite song? They're talking about their favorite songs to each other. And so they called me and said, what's your favorite song? I said, I don't, listen, I don't know. There's so many songs that I like. And I said, let's, let's narrow it down. I said, my favorite, if we're talking about worship songs, I would have to say my favorite worship song is probably Heart of Worship as my all-time like, favorite worship song. I said, but my current favorite song is The Goodness of God. I love that song. Corp says, I love that song too. So I said, guys, what's your favorite song? Uh, I've turned, my boys listen now to the music that I listen to. It's a kind of invert happens like that, right? And so whenever they're driving with me, I always play my, the music I like. And I, like, I love this band, Jars of Clay. I've liked them, loved them since I was 15 years old. One of my favorite bands of all time. And Corbin, that's his favorite band, which is ironic. They don't really tour or produce albums anymore, but he listens to the old stuff. And they have this song called Dead Man Carry Me, which sounds weird, but it's a really great song. It's about surrendering yourself each and every day. And that's when we start thinking about Paul. And I was explaining to him, you know, that's actually from the New Testament. I said, Paul talks about, he's like, what does that mean when you, when you died to yourself? I said, well, it's actually exactly what my message this morning, so you should just listen in here. No, I said, it's about recognizing that you can't do this world on your own. You can't do this life on your own. You have family. You have me. You have mom. You have these people in your life that will support you, that will encourage you, but we're not going to be perfect. And there may be times where you feel let down by us, and I hope that never happens, but it, it could happen because we're human. We're people. I said, but a song talks about when you died yourself. I said, in the New Testament, Paul writes about die, daily dying to himself. In other words, he surrendered himself each and every day, and he put his hope in Jesus. I said, so that's what that song is talking about, and that's what we need to do. And hope is available, hope in Jesus, I should say, is available to all of us. But the second thing this morning, really important thing, hope in Jesus is also contagious. Talk about leprosy, so we're on the, on the theme of, of, of contagious diseases, right? But, but hope in Jesus is contagious. So let's go back to that story, the leper story. So I'm not reading the whole context of, of everything, but I'll, I'll, I'll summarize a little bit. So they ended up going to the camp, right? So they went to the camp of their enemies, where they had that conversation. We could show up there, and they could just kill us on sight, and then, boom, all our pain and suffering is over on this earth. Or they could spare us and maybe throw us a, a couple bones, so to speak, and then we can live for a few more days and not die with empty bellies. So they went to the camp, and if you remember the story, the camp was completely abandoned. There's no one there. The food was set on the table. And they had left everything. They, the enemy had scattered God, and, and we find out God had actually scattered them. God had created a chaos, and they had fled the camp, right? And they left everything. All their, 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 their stuff from war, all their gold, all, all the silver, all the, all the coins that they had collected, and they had scavenged, all the food that they had. Remember, they were taking all the food that was going into the city. They had built up a surplus of food, so much food. And so when these four lepers found the camps abandoned, they celebrated, and by celebrate, they ate a lot of food. They covered themselves. They actually took uh, the, the, the jewels and, and the expensive items that they found. They, they took it, they went and buried it in the woods, and they came back and they grabbed some more. And same thing you and I would do, let's be honest, all right? They came back and they got it again, but then they ate. They ate and they ate and they ate because these guys were starving. To a point of starvation, they were ready to die. They were hoping, actually, that they would be killed. So we're going to pick it up at that point in the story. They, they found the camp abandoned. They celebrated. They ate all they could eat. And then they realized, they realized they needed to share in this good news, to share in this hope they discovered. In 2 Kings chapter 7, now picking up in verse 9, Then they said to each other, I love this. What we're doing is not right. They have turkey bones in their, and they're eating turkey legs. They're drinking wine. They're, they're finally filling their bellies. And they say in all of this, what we are doing, it's not right. 
this is a day of good news and we're keeping it to ourselves. This is, this is going to feed the entire kingdom, our entire city, our, our loved ones, even the ones that pushed us out and said, hey, you can't come here anymore. We still love them. We kind of understand why they did it. We're kind of, our skin's falling off. I get it, right? It's contagious. But what we have here needs to be shared with others. And they took a second chance. And they went back to their city and shared that news. Hope in Jesus is and should be that contagious. We know that hope through Jesus absolute is, absolutely sets us free. It doesn't make us, um, it doesn't exclude us from difficult times. I've already said that. It doesn't exclude us from having heartaches in our, our lives. But it gives us a peace that surpasses our ability to understand. It gets us through difficult situations and get difficult days and weeks and months and years because of the hope that we have in Jesus. We know that hope that Jesus sets us free and we can celebrate and find peace. But we also know that it is and should be contagious. And this is the great and wonderful thing about the good news of the gospel. It was never meant to be kept a secret. Yet sometimes we act like it is. And when people say to you, you know, how do you have peace in such difficult times? That's a perfect opportunity to say, because I have a hope in something that's never failed me, never let me down. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. This is God, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. It's a biblical concept. God gives us hope. I ask you a question this morning. Who do you know right now that needs peace and hope in their life? It could be you, and that's fine. Who, including yourself, who in your life do you know needs peace and hope in their life? Here's the second part of that question. What have you done, or what can you do to spread the hope of Jesus? I guarantee each one of us can identify someone in our life that needs to be at least reminded, if they're a follower of Christ, need to be reminded of a, of a hope that they have. I know it doesn't, we don't think very hard to think about people in our life that are going through some struggles right now. So if, if they're followers in Christ, we're reminding them of the hope that they have. But if they haven't surrendered themselves to Christ to begin with, that's where we start. That's the gospel of the good news. That is... What, uh, what, that is what, first of all, we're commanded to do, to go into the world to preach the gospel to everybody, to every creature, right? To everybody. So what are we doing about this? What have you done or can you do to spread the hope that we have through Jesus? You might say, well, I don't know how to, to do it. I'm not the, the vocal person, and I can't just go up to strangers. I'm not, I'm not, I am not one of those people that can just go up to any stranger. I fake it a lot. I pretend a lot, but I'm naturally an introvert, which, by the way, introvert doesn't mean we're so quiet all the time. It just means that our, our batteries are recharged by different things, right? So my battery is not recharged by talking to people. My battery is recharged by, by doing things, you know, a little, more, a little more unique to me. Reading a book. Just being quiet is my favorite way to recharge my battery, just being in peace and, and quiet. So we naturally think of, well, if I'm not extrovert, I can't go talk to people. No, that's not true right? That's not true. This is how. You want, to, you want to start spreading the hope of Jesus? I'm going to tell you very simple steps of how to do this. This is very easy. You start by loving people. How do you love people? Well, I can't tell you how to love people, but I can tell you the ways that I love people. We love people by listening to them. We love people by demonstrating compassion and, and, and showing some empathy. And even if you, if you don't fully understand what the situation they're going through, you can still be empathetic and say, I can't imagine what you must be going through, but I'm here for you. You want to start by loving people and showing hope? Start by serving them. What does that mean? We think of service, maybe in church you think of service as doing a ministry, which is part of service, by the way, absolutely. But there's other ways that we serve people as well. We serve them by sharing the good news of the gospel. We serve them by looking at needs that they have and seeing if there's a way that we can help meet those needs. My dad used to tell me, listen, you can tell people about Jesus all you want, but if they're hungry, they're not going to be thinking about what you're telling them. They're going to think about the fact that they're hungry. 
if, if, if they are going through a difficult situation in their life, you can tell them about the hope they have in Jesus, but, but better yet, you can help listen to them, share compassion towards them, and that opens the door for you to be able to talk to them about the hope that you have through Jesus. So start by loving on people, listening to people, demonstrate compassion towards people, serving people. Then move to sharing the hope that lies within you, the hope that, you, that sees you and has seen you through the darkest times and days of your life, the hope that you have for the future, and ultimately the hope that you have for eternity. This, this is the day of good news. And we're keeping it to ourselves, going back to the lepers. Like, this is awesome. We have, have so much. We have so much treasure, we're not going to remember where we hid it later on. We have so much food that we're starting to get sick from eating too much. We have so many good things. But this is not great. This is not good that we are not sharing this with others. Hope found in Jesus was never meant to be kept a secret. There's an old song. Uh, by, the, by a band called Newsboys, and simply called God is Not a Secret to be Kept. It's a great song, and that's the very same message. Hope found in Jesus was never meant to be kept a secret. Mark 16, 15 says, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to all creation, to everybody. What is all creation? It's, it's literally it's everything and everybody. Every part of this world, every person that you come across. And your world, by the way, we think of world, most of us think of like, like missions and going into other countries, which absolutely is part of it. But you know where your world begins, by the way? Your, for, your, your, your front step of your house. As soon as you walk through the doors of this church, anytime you're out in this world, that is your world. So if you're called to, to missions and you're called to, to travel across this world, then that's fantastic if I have many family and still have family and cousins uh, that do that. Absolutely great, the wonderful calling. Your world, the mission field starts right outside this door. There are people everywhere you look and anywhere you go that feel hopeless. They feel lost. They feel unloved. And they feel like these lepers did that they're at the end of the rope. The hope within you is never meant to be kept a secret. So we need to share it. We need to live it. We need to rejoice in it. It's a powerful thing that overcomes the darkness of this world. It sets us free. It renews and refreshes us. And, and that's where some of us might be at right now. We need to be reminded of this hope that we have to renew us. What does that mean? It means to, to kickstart us sometimes, to refresh us, to remind us of the hope that we have in Jesus. So when we are going through those dark times, we know that it's dark. We know that it hurts. We also know that we don't, mourn like the world mourns. We have hope like the world doesn't have. We experience love in ways that the world has never experienced until they accept Christ into their hearts. We have a hope based on what God has done for us, what he's currently doing for us, and what we know He is going to do for us. Our hope is made strong by our faith. Let's talk about faith for just a minute. Hope and faith in a lot of ways are mutually inclusive of each other. Hope and faith. You have to really have both in order to survive. You can't truly then have hope until you have faith, but you can't really have faith until you have hope. See how they kind of work together. 1 Peter 3.15 says this, But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. I love how it says at the end. He could have just ended it there. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone. So anybody who asks you a reason for your hope, the reason that you can keep on going, the reason that you can still have a smile on your face, or the reason that you can get through difficult times, uh, give them a reason. Make sure you give an answer. The answer is Jesus, okay? He didn't stop there. He could have ended the sentence there, but he says... But do this with gentleness and respect. Now, you can read into that many different ways of what he was trying to say. I, I think he's trying to say you do it with a lot of gratitude in your heart, right? Remembering who you were before Christ. And so if you're speaking to someone that doesn't have Christ, make sure you're speaking to them in a way with gentleness and respect. Model, right? The way that Christ modeled for us. But to always be ready to give an answer. I love this. To always be ready to give an answer, we must live lives that people will question. 
To always be ready to give an answer, First Peter tells us, to always be ready to give an answer, we've got to be living a life, our lives in such a way that people will say, well, how come they can live that way? How come you can get up in the mornings? How come you can get through time? How come when bad things happen to you, you're still helping other people? I don't understand. That's giving them an answer to the question. To always be ready to give an answer to the question of the hope that you have. What sets us apart? What, what makes us different from this world? If we know who holds tomorrow, then we know that we don't need to worry. This is what sets us apart. This is what will cause people to question us about our faith. So we need to live a life that people will question. To give them the answer of the hope that lies within us. Hope in Jesus this morning. His name is Jesus. That's where we get our hope. He is my hope. He is my strength. He is the supplier of my need. I will talk about he's the lover of my soul. He loves my soul. He loves my life more than I do. He loves every hair in my head. He cares for our worries. He is my hope. He is your hope. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Hope in Jesus. Let's bow our heads this morning. I don't know everybody here. I don't know, obviously, who's watching us online this morning on our streams. Um, but I do know that there's many people here this morning that understand hope in the way that I'm talking about this morning. You've asked Christ to come into your heart. You understand when I say that doesn't mean life's going to be perfect, doesn't mean life's not going to have hardships, but you also understand that that hope is what gets you through those times. Some of us need to be reminded of that hope that we have. But there's also, I know, there's also some that are listening or watching today. You know who God is. You believe that there is a God, but you've never had time and place in your life where you ask for forgiveness of your sins. You surrendered yourself. as Jesus to come into your heart to forgive you, to redeem you. And if that's you this morning, this is where your hope actually begins. You can have all the hope in the world. You can believe that there is a God but until you confess with your lips, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, until you do that, then you won't understand the true hope in Jesus that can be found. It's my challenge to you this morning. That you remember that blessed hope or that you would discover that hope for the first time. As we're just sitting here, and, and thinking about that for a moment, I go back to that, that first question I asked you with your head bowed and eyes closed. What do you think about when you think about hope? I'm obviously drawn to what this day is, what we remember on this day. And my prayer is that anybody that's, that's, that has lost a loved one, anybody that was impacted by those days like all of us are, that we are reminded of the hope that we have through Jesus. Let's pray this morning, God. I pray that you would remind us, God, of who you are and what you've done in our lives. Help us, God, to be able to cling on to your word, cling on to the hope that we have through you and in you, God. God, if there's anyone this morning that has never had a time and place in their life where they surrendered themselves to you, they've asked forgiveness of their sins, that they will call out your name right now, Jesus, I am a sinner in need of salvation. I confess, God, with my lips, and I believe in my heart that you are Lord. Save me. Forgive me. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Give me a blessed hope that I've heard about this morning. If you would pray that prayer, that God welcomes you into his family, and you can start living a life now that has true hope, true purpose. It doesn't take all pain away doesn't take all the hardships and struggles that you'll have in this earth, but it gives you a reason to continue. It gives you a confidence so that you can then help others. God, thank you for this time we've had this morning. Help us to cling on to your word. 
Help us to be reminded of the blessed hope that we have through you. God, remind us, God, that our hope is built on nothing less than the blood of your son, Jesus. Thank you for this time this morning. Amen. If you stand up this morning as we are ending. reflective on God's word, reflected on what hope actually can mean for us. 
Let's remember that as we walk out these doors this morning. Thank you. God bless you.